If you're a true crime fan who's never heard of Broadmoor Hospital, you'll be in for a shock if you Google the place. Nevertheless, it's still up and running to this day, having housed some of the most infamous mentally ill criminals who are known to be so dangerous that they're not safe to be behind the walls of a regular prison. Located in Crowthorne, Berkshire, England, the High Security Psychiatric Hospital has earned quite the reputation since its opening 160 years ago. It was once known as Broadmoor Criminal Lunatic Asylum, but now the institution acts as a hospital for those with severe mental illnesses, many of which are patients who have been sent via the criminal justice system. Which leads me on to today's topic, where we'll be exploring the life of Richard Dad, who had served time at the institution for the murder of his father following his descent into madness. Born on August 1st, 1817 in Chatham, Kent, Richard Dad lived with his father, Robert Dad, who was a chemist and had a passion for geology and fossil hunting, and his mother, Mary Ann, who was daughter of shipwright Richard Martin. He was the fourth child of the family. Richard's mother unfortunately passed away when Richard was just seven years old. Richard was educated at King's School in Rochester and he proved to be exceptionally talented at art. He was brilliant at drawing from an early age and this did not go unrecognised as his passion led to his admission at the Royal Academy of Arts at the age of 20, after him and his father moved to London in the heart of artistic institutions. In the late 1830s, Richard was the founder of The Clique, an art group that consisted of six other members, Augustus Egg, Alfred Elmore, William Powell Frith, Henry Nelson O'Neill, John Philip and Edward Matthew Ward. The clique expressed a general distaste for academic high art in favour of genre painting, and their art forms reflected previous works by William Hogarth and David Wilkie. The group also believed that art should be judged by the public and not by its conformity to academic ideals. Frith had once described Richard as a man of genius that would assuredly have placed him high in the first rank of painters. As a student, Richard earned many rewards in the orthodox topics such such as architecture and academy figures, but amongst his work colleagues, he was known to prefer the works of fantasy and Shakespearean themes. During his career, Richard flourished in the world of art. His best-known early works include the illustrations that he produced for the Book of British Ballads and a frontispiece he designed for the Kentish Coronal, though at the time his paintings never sold for much money. But in July 1842, Richard's look was about to increase. The former mayor of Newport, Sir Thomas Phillips, had become aware of Richard's work through David Roberts, who was Britain's most popular oriental landscape artist, and chose him to be his draftsman on an expedition which would have them travel through Europe to Greece, Turkey, southern Syria, and then finally to Egypt. Richard was to draw all of the places they had visited for Phillips on this journey, and with that, the expedition commenced, and Richard could integrate his love of art through means of travel. In November of that year, the pair spent a demanding and exhausting two weeks in southern Syria, passing from Jerusalem to Jordan and returning across the Engadi wilderness. Richard also soon realised that the expedition wasn't all that he'd imagined. He found it difficult to sketch on horseback, too dark to sketch at night, and occasionally the pair were chased by villagers. Things took a turn in December that year, and by the time the pair had reached Syria, Richard's mental health was deteriorating at a rapid rate. His first sign of mental disturbance was recorded in a letter that he wrote to a friend which read, I have laid down at night with my imagination so full of vagaries that I have really and truly doubted my own sanity. Nevertheless, their tour continued through the Holy Land and around the Nile River. Whilst they were travelling up the Nile by boat, Richard had again recorded his unexplained feelings, noting that he had experienced six full days of nervous depression. Due to the amount of hours that the men had spent exposed to the blistering heat, Richard's condition was at first thought to be a bad case of sunstroke but the behaviour seemed to continue, worsening by the day. On the return journey, Richard and Phillips had discussed Egyptian gods in great detail, and Richard had become obsessed with the discussion of political and religious topics. When the pair were passing through Italy, he expressed a desire to attack the Pope after his mental state had caused him to become increasingly violent. He'd also expressed the feeling of being watched, and believed that he was under the influence of Egyptian god Osiris. The delusional religious undertones of Richard's mindset proved difficult 
difficult for Phillips to handle, and upon arriving in Paris, he recommended that Richard seek psychiatric help. Richard subsequently abandoned Phillips during the expedition and made his own way back to England in the spring of 1843. Back at home, rumours had begun to circulate that Richard was going mad, but because he had become increasingly withdrawn, they could not confirm their concerns. A later delusion that Richard was recorded to have suffered from was his decision to live on new laid eggs and ale. Within a few months of his return, Richard's father sought the opinion of a local physician, Dr. Sutherland of St. Luke's Asylum, after experiencing Richard's delusions firsthand. The physician recommended that Richard be hospitalised, but Richard denied this treatment and instead continued to live at home in great disturbance. And in addition, Richard's father seemed to find difficulty in the acceptance that his son's behaviour was beyond his control, even though another one of his sons was also showing symptoms of insanity. On August 28, 1843, between 9 and 10 p.m., Richard expressed to his father that the pair should go on a walk to Cobham Park, suggesting that it could be helpful to his state of mind. However, upon arrival to the park, Richard proceeded to stab his father to death with a spring knife. Evidence was found to suggest that there had been a struggle, and his father had obtained various cuts and bruises during the attack. Richard had developed the belief that his father was the devil, and he did not realise that it was his father that he had slain, but rather a demon fiend who had come to prosecute him. Richard subsequently made an attempt to flee to France following the murder, but within a short period of time, he was arrested near Fontainebleau after attempting to kill a fellow passenger in a carriage. Richard spent 10 months in the Clermont Asylum before being brought back to England, where he was kept in the criminal ward of Bethlehem Royal Hospital. He was under the care of two visiting physicians, Sir Alexander Morrison and E.T. Monroe. Richard is widely believed to have been suffering from what we now identify to be schizophrenia. However, due to the time period of which Richard had shown these symptoms, a diagnostic criteria did not exist for this condition until many years after his death. During his time at Bethlehem, Richard was encouraged to continue his love for art as a part of his rehabilitation. He began painting over an extended period of time, and on a few occasions he had sketched the expressions of other patients at the hospital. When Dr. Sir Alexander Morrison was replaced with a younger resident physician, Richard had painted the portrait of Sir Alexander Morrison in 1852, which was thought to be a goodbye gift of some sorts. Richard's paintings and other works soon became unused and neglected, as Bethlehem Hospital no longer allowed his work to be available to the outside world. Nevertheless, he continued to paint, and his new physician William Charles Hood even posed for the portrait of a young man, which is now displayed in the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. Richard also commissioned Contradiction, Oberon and Titania, which is one of Richard's best-known works. An interesting painting done by Richard in Bethlehem could mildly resemble his state of mind. A painting named Sketch of an Idea for Crazy Jane seemed to be a follow-up of a painting he had done over a decade prior to his incarceration. The later work seems to depict the same woman featured in an earlier painting, but this time she appears dishevelled and seems to be engaging in strange behaviours, which one could perceive to be a reflection of his view of insanity and his own descent into madness. Between 1855 and 1864, Richard had worked on painting The Fairy Fella's Master Stroke upon the request of G.H. Hayden, who had asked Richard for a fairy painting of his own. Richard spent nine years on this now famous painting, and although he considered it to be unfinished, it had later inspired a song written by Freddie Mercury after he had come to appreciate the work after seeing it at the Tate Gallery in London, where it still remains to this day. Richard has created a plethora of beautiful artworks, too many to list in this video, but his extensive efforts over the many years of his artistic career paid off in his legacy, and his apparent attention to minute detail remains an object of admiration to this day. In 1864, Richard was transferred from Bethlehem to Broadmoor Hospital, where he would spend the remainder of his life. He was housed in the block reserved for permanent patients that did not necessarily pose a great risk to others. During his later years, Richard continued to paint. However, as he grew older and his condition worsened, most of his works never progressed beyond outlines. His creative mind was still being exercised, though, and he frequently created backdrops and scenery for the Broadmoor stage productions. In 1885, Richard fell ill with tuberculosis, and as his physical health deteriorated, he passed away on January 7th of 1886 from an extensive disease of the lungs. Richard was buried on the asylum grounds. A number of his works still remain on display in Broadmoor Hospital today, allowing his legacy as a notable artist to live on through the walls of where he once lived many of his days.